Welcome to the first of a second series on the new Peisty Bronze Gongs. I'm going to be covering all seven of the gongs that I personally own, compare them to some of the other gongs I have, and also sort of compare them to some of the other bronze gongs that I have played or heard in videos. So, grab a cuppa and I'll see you shortly, right here on It's Cuppa Time. As I said, this is the second series on the Peisty Bronze Gong set. The first series I did last October when I went down to Andy's Music in Chicago and helped Andy open up the crate of gongs that he received from Peisty. And I ended up making five videos that you can find linked below. Check those out. So today I'm going to start the first of a new series. And what I plan to do is make four or five videos on the new gongs. First, I'm going to talk about the number zero and number one, which are based on the old sound creation earth gong. Then I'll be talking about number two and number four, like this, which are based on the old sound creation water gong. Then we'll talk about the number six and the number eight, with the number six based on the symphonic gong, and the number eight being a completely new design. And finally, I will finish up with the number nine, which I happen to own two different number nines that do sound very different from each other. So I will compare and contrast those. And then possibly a fifth and final video where I just kind of go through everything and sum it all up. So let's get started. I have my Sound Creation 32 inch Earth Gong up here that I've had for a long time. This one is from the 1980s. Here is the number zero gong. And I thought I would show you, nobody ever shows the back of these, but I think this is kind of important. If we look, here is the number one, which is a brilliant finished gong. If you look at the back, it is a non-brilliant finish. So just for people who don't know and have never seen the back. So this is all nice and rough looking from the heating and hammering and all the effects of the factory. So then they buff the front out to a beautiful and lustrous golden bronze color. Now there's been a real big recent discussion on one of the gong forums about brilliant gongs and scratches and cleaning them. So I want to address that first. All, all gongs, all peisty gongs and other European style gongs have a protective coating applied to them. And this coating helps keep them from tarnishing helps keep fingerprints from actually touching the metal, which will cause tarnishing and marks and that. So there should be no need on a, especially a new gong to use any sort of harsh cleaners. All you need to do is after you've handled them, played them, wipe them down with a soft cloth, like a micro, microfiber cloth or something uh, cotton, like even an old t-shirt. If you need any further cleaning, what I always suggest to people, and this comes from not, not just from gong playing, but I've been doing drum repairs since I was 18 years old for various music stores. And I currently work for a music store chain as the drum repair and uh, refurbished person. What most people who do refurbish drums and clean them up what most people use is Dawn Blue dish detergent and water because it works really well. Dawn Blue is designed as a grease cutting 
detergent. And it's actually what they use when they're cleaning up birds from oil spills. So I use Dawn Blue and water in a spray bottle. I don't have it, have any exact mix. I just put some water in the bottle, put a little Dawn Blue in there, shake it up. If it looks sort of blue, it's probably fine. But you can just spray that on and then wipe it off again with a soft cloth. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't leave any residue. So it's pretty easy to clean. And I use that at the shop all the time, cleaning up chrome drum hardware, cleaning up stands, drum heads, drum shells, you know, everything like that. And it works really well. So you could just use a spray bottle or you could just apply, get a wet rag and put a little Dawn on there and kind of, you know, scrunch up the rag a bit and then apply it on. Take another rag that's clean with no soap on, that's a little damp, wipe it off and then buff it nicely with, again, a soft cloth, t-shirt, something like that. That should be all you really need to do in cleaning a gong. But I wanted to address this because there's been this big discussion on Facebook. And the big thing about metal polishes, all metal polishes have abrasives in there. Either some sort of limestone, silica, some sort of crushed rock, very fine particles in there. And what they do is, yeah, when you're rubbing, especially a heavily patinaed object, like if you have a, a brass lamp or a brass vase, you know, you know, something like that, that can get really dark and patinaed. And you use the metal polish on it or silver, something like that. It, it's actually kind of scraping the surface off with that abrasive. Gets it nice and clean. That's fine. But people have noticed that especially on a brilliant gong, if you use an abrasive cleaner, you might find little scratches that you can see. Now on a regular finish gong like this or this, it's, it's not as easy to see all these little tiny scratches. But on something like a brilliant gong, like some of these new bronze gongs or the brilliant symphonic gongs that Peisty makes, they show up. Just about any mark shows up. So they're lovely looking. They're a little more difficult to take care of. And Peisty just suggests wiping them off with a cloth. Simple as that. So let's get on to the gongs. So I said, I've got the 32 inch Sound Creation Earth Gong. And then these are both 28 inches. These are based off of this. In the Sound Creation, they do have a 26, 32, 38, and a giant 60 inch. So they have a whole family of those. But let's play the Sound Creation first so you kind of get the idea of where they were basing the new ones on. Now just a note, I use my hands on the gongs. I know a lot of people freak out about that. Even before this whole COVID thing, I had a uh, sort of a hand washing fetish because I'm always working with equipment. I keep my hands washed all the time. So I'm not rubbing a lot of hand oil, finger oil, all over my gong when I do that. And I touch my gongs with my hands all the time. I don't want to wear gloves. It just doesn't work for me. I see a lot of people with the gloves and they're, you know, real careful. I don't have time for that, but I keep my hands clean. So I don't want anybody writing in, oh, you, you were touching your gong. So I do that all the time. Back to the sound here. Okay, we get that deep, dark sound. The crash in the center is, as I've described in a previous video, sort of that blah. It kind of, kind of has this 
attack and it opens up. And you can hear that, it's kind of blah. There's, there's, it's not just a ah. And then the dark center, you move to the edge, you get a more harmonics. This particular gong, it pretty much stays all dark and low. I love this gong. I've had it for a long time, but in many ways it's very one-dimensional. It does what it does very well. Dark, low wash. Dark, low crash. That's what it's designed for. And as you can see, a lot of really large and deep hammer strikes. The face is very flat. Now on a symphonic gong, there'll be a little raise right about here, and the center is actually a raised membrane from the edge. This is kept completely flat, and it has a lot of large hammer marks from the back, from the reverse side, and then it has some smaller ones from the front side. So that sort of hammering really gives it that dark sound. And because it's a flat face, it vibrates completely differently than a symphonic gong. It's, and that's sort of why I believe you're not getting all the highs out of this one, because it just acts as one vibrating low membrane here. But a fantastic sound. I, I love the earth gong, so I was very excited to see that they would have two earth types. So now let's look at number zero here. As you can see, it, it's, it's similar. It has less hammer marks than its counterpart, Sound Creation, or even the number two. Not as heavily hammered. Still very, very flat face. There really is no no raise here. Like I said, normally this would be raised up just a little bit. And I love this gong a lot. It's got a lot of the same character. similar in, in a low pitch. They both have that nice low quality. One difference I've noticed working with this is it does have some higher harmonics that pop out. I've found there's a sweet spot right about here that will let those out. there. There's some harmonics that jump out. So you get in the low oh, wash, but then you get in that oh, riding right above. And it once again has that sort of blah sort of sound where it, it modulates a bit. It's just not a straight crash. Okay. 
compare it once again to the sound creation style. Very similar. It's pretty much a bronze version of this. Very, very similar. Let's try a couple other mallets here. similar in how they react when you play them with, with some rollers and get a real sustained sound. This one I can tell is a much lighter weight gong because it doesn't take as much to open up as the 32 inch which takes a little more work, a little more oomph, but there's a lot more metal here. So in some ways it's sort of difficult to compare gongs that are four inches different in size, but that's what we have, so that's what we're getting here. Okay, let's look at the number one. Like I said, the number one has, it looks like, even twice as many hammerings. It has the very reflective, brilliant finish on it. And what I have found with these two is they're very similar gongs. Now, I've listened to a lot of video. I've I spent the past few weeks going through all the bronze gong videos on YouTube. Listened to them all multiple times. I've made notes about the different ones and that, but I'm kind of a nerd about all this. It's kind of my research that I've done. And these gongs do vary a lot. As Eric Peisty told me, they vary from gong to gong. And I have heard some of these that are a little brighter, higher pitch. I've heard some of these that are a little darker in pitch and have, you know, different characteristics to the sound. Although they all fit within the types. All number ones are very number one. All, or zeros are very zero. Number ones are very number one. And they all have that sort of earth gong sound to them. These two are very similar in pitch and sound. I was sort of hoping I would have, you know, a high and low gong, which would be nice. I'm not complaining about that because they're really great gongs. I would probably never use them at the same time because they are similar. And even if they were really different pitches, I wouldn't use them at the same time. And you'll see this when we go over the number nine gongs that I have two of, where they are very different. But here's the number zero, or excuse me, number one. Gets confusing. <laughs> Now 
let's compare it. similar in pitch there I actually wrote the pitches down and I can't remember but they're they're really close but they are very different in how they react this one feels stiffer possibly due to the amount of hammering marks on it and it has to me it has a different sound where this one has a like I said more of a blah where there's a modulation This one is much more straight on, kind of a <sighs> The feel is more solid. I think the sound is more solid with this one, too. And there's a different set of overtones, harmonics, on this one compared to this one. set uh, up there in, the, in this one. This one has like a, uh, a little, little deeper set of harmonics. It's subtle. It's a subtle difference because the pitches are so close. I think if one was much higher or much lower, you would really, you know, might notice the, the subtleties more because they would jump out differently. And it might be hard to hear, you know, just on YouTube because of YouTube sound quality. But there are subtle differences. subtleties between them. And I think the biggest difference is in how they open up. Like I said, this has that sort of a blah where you get the initial dark strike and then the overtones sort of come in a little later where this is sort of everything just opens up right at once. So let me play some on number zero here, or number one. It is confusing, all these different numbers. <laughs>
Well, there you have it. The sound creation. Number three, Earth Gong. Versus the Bronze Gong number zero and number one, which are both based on the earlier sound creation design. Leave something in the comments if you have questions or thoughts about it. I'd love to see something. Hit subscribe down below if you really like the series I've been doing. And we will see you next time when we look at the water gongs. Take care.